if you're already in Photoshop, just do a File New. Um, if you just open Photoshop, just do a Create New. And we're going to do something a specific size on there. So after Create New, Create New brings up a whole dialog box. Um, along the top, you've got different options. You've got like uh, photo, print, art and illustration, web. And like under photo, it's going to give you the traditional photo sizes. There's like a 4x6, a 5x7. I think there's an 8x10 down farther. Um, we're going to go to print though. And we're going to do a print one. Now under print, you'll see there's a letter. There's like an 8 half by 11 That's just like your normal sheet of paper. Legal. We're looking for the tabloid. Do you have one that says tabloid on it? We're going to use that one. I think A4 is an envelope. Uh, but we're going to click on tabloid. Don't hit OK yet though. We're going to click on tabloid. And if you notice over on the right hand side, it starts to set up your document for you. It's 11 inches by 17 inches. That's going to be the traditional poster size. And I'm going to start printing some of these things and we'll display them out in the commons and stuff. So 11 by 17 is your normal size. Then you can do portrait or landscape. We're going to do landscape on this one. So click on landscape. So it makes it 17 wide and 11 high. Now you can decide when you create yours today, you can go either direction. It's going to be this size, but I don't care what direction you go with that. Um, we're going to do 300 pixels per inch. Let's lower that down to one. Uh, I think that'll help you. Let's lower that down to 150. You won't notice the difference on that. So usually um, print is 300, but then it starts to sometimes, we're going to start adding a lot of pictures and stuff, so it might start slowing you down a little bit. So we're just going to keep that at, at 150. And we're going to keep it at RGB. We could do CMYK on that because we're going to print out some of these, but a lot of them we're just going to see on the screen. So we're going to keep that RGB. If we were going to just print out everybody's, what would you change that to? Yeah, CYK or CMYK, right? CMYK on that one. And then usually resolution, keep it at 300. If you do screens, like we could go clear down to 72. That's the dots per inch on your screen. 72 is normal. Print is usually 300 because printers can get 300 dots per square inch on it. So, okay, we good there? Let's do create. That's going to give us our document. Now let's do it. We're going to put a background on our document. You're going to do this, the things that we do, the steps that we do, you're going to do quite a few times today as we get, um, as we get going. So let's go up to file. And we're going to do place embedded. That's how you get another image in there or, or put something onto your document. You could do a place linked, but a place linked means you have to have your images with your with your project all the time. Like they got to be in the same folder so it finds it. So I always do place embedded. That means it puts it right inside of Photoshop for you. Okay, so do place embedded. So file this place embedded. We're going to go to this PC. And then on your this PC, there's a 704 video drive. I don't know if we played with this yet in this class. So 704 video. Do you find that all right? We're going to go to digital media. I guess we've done this. We did this with Justin, didn't we? And this time we're going to do um, green filled. Look for green filled. Okay. Okay, that's green filled. So now if you notice it's got a bounding box in it, it looks a little bit grainy too. So don't worry about that. That'll clear up. It's just, just kind of before we set this into our document. Now grab the a corner or just one of the handles there and size that down. Now if you notice, it, it keeps the proportions for you. This is different in, in the new Photoshop. It used to be it would go all, it would skew the picture. And that drives me crazy whenever, especially like, like a photo, like if somebody's picture and they stretch it just a little bit and you're like, that is just wrong. So thank goodness they've done that. If you do want to skew it, like let's say you don't want it to, to go that way. If you hold your shift key down, then you can do whatever you want with that image. Okay, but I like to have it so it's normal. So let's stretch that to fit the whole the whole our whole document. Okay. And you can you can arrange that, you know, if you want to have more grass you can or more sky. I don't it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Um, what we're doing today. Okay, now a couple ways to set this in because it's not set in yet. You can do it two ways. There's a checkbox up here on the top right, or you can just hit your enter key. You can do either either one of those and that sets your image in. And it'll, it'll clear that up a little bit for you too so it looks a little bit a little bit nicer. Good so far? Okay, let's put something on top of our 
field now. So we're going to add another image to that. So let's go up to File, Place Embedded again. Come on. So File, Place Embedded. Go to the same drive. And we're going to do Justin Bieber one more time. So do pick one of the Justin images. It can be warped. They're the same thing. Have you seen Justin Bieber's new video that came out? You've got to watch it. It's like a whole new direction for him. Has Chance the Rapper. Do you guys know who Chance the Rapper is? Has Chance the Rapper in it. And it's crazy. It's good. It surprised me. Okay, so anyways, not that I'm a Justin Bieber fan. It just came up on my feed this morning. I don't like searching anymore. That one. <laughs> okay, so if we got Justin here. Let's go ahead and set him in. Doesn't really. We're going to size him in just a minute. What we want to do first is we're going to remove his, the background from him. So we're going to do this using a couple different tools. Okay, so don't use the tool that we did last time. Yep, for, for reals. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, well, let me show you this first. Go over on the layer that you have where it says Justin Bieber. And next to the Justin, next to the J, you'll see a little teeny box. You see the little icon of Justin, and there's a little teeny box right there. If you mouse over it, it'll say Smart Object. I think it does. Come on. Does it say Smart Object when you mouse over it? Come on. There it goes. So it says smart object thumbnail. So the smart object means it's not really editable right now. You can size it and do some different things with it, but it doesn't have it's not into pixels. So we have to do what we call rasterize it to make it so that it's editable. So we're gonna do a right click right on that layer. Don't do it on the picture, do it on the words, do a right click on it, and we're gonna do rasterize layer. And that's gonna take that little teeny box away. That means it's now kind of in a pixel format that we can edit and do some things with it. If you start trying to edit your image and you can't do anything, that means you didn't rasterize the layer. So you have to make sure that's, and, and you'll do that guaranteed. You'll get down, you'll get, you'll get on a roll and you're like, it's not doing anything. That, okay, I forgot to rasterize it. Then you probably already, you gotta do it on the letters, on the words, don't do it on the, don't do it on the picture. Okay, let's go up and do, let's, we're gonna do selection tools down the left hand side here. Go ahead and grab this, the square one. There's a rectangle and marquee tool. If it's a circle, it's underneath that, but it should be the rectangle one. And just go out and just drag a, make a box around Justin's head. Now go grab your move tool. It's the crosshairs at the very top. And watch what you can do with this. Then go and grab the, his head and drag it. Click and hold and drag it. So that's one of the first things you can do with the selection tool is you can just cut things right out and move those, move them around. Now try a control C and a control V. Tell me what that does. So control C, control V, it's gonna give you come on. No V's not working. Come on. The keyboard's not doing it. What did it do for you though? Did multiple like multiple lessons. And if you look over here too, it'll give you multiple layers. So every time you hit the pace, it's going to give you a new layer with his face on it. Okay, cool enough. Okay, control Z out of that until he gets back to back to normal. And then how do I get rid of the dotted lines? Do you guys remember? Control D. Yeah, remember, control D for deselect. So that's the marquee tool. And underneath, underneath that, you'll see there's a elliptical a single row and a single column if you ever need to do like a circle or anything along those lines let's go to the one just underneath it click and hold on that so we're three tools down you'll see a lasso tool a polygonal lasso tool and a magnetic lasso a lasso tool is like a pen tool it's just a free form you can do your wherever you want to trace your your selection the polygonal tool will give you straight lines so you can make like a octagon or whatever you wanted to with it we're going to use the magnetic lasso tool. So click on the magnetic lasso tool. What that one does is it tries to find the difference between contrast and pixels. So it'll, it'll try to automatically. So we're going to use that tool and we're going to trace around 
um, Justin's sweater, his head, and all the way back till we get to the, we're going to make a complete circle with that. So click anywhere on the edge of his sweater, and you don't have to hold it, and then I'm just going to trace around, and you're going to see you're starting to get the selection. Now if it goes off a little bit, and this tool can get out of control pretty quickly. Don't get it perfect because we're going to do, we're going to make it perfect in a minute. If you get too far, you can control Z back. I think it's control Z or it might be the delete key. If you hit you escape, if you escape, that gets you totally started over. Does control Z do it? Get the delete. Do backspace. It's one I can't remember what it is. Yeah, it's backspace. The backspace key will go back. That's what it was. It's the backspace key goes back. But if it gets out of control, then just sometimes use your startup. Don't spend a lot of time getting the tracing. When you get back to the beginning, point the tip of the of your of your arrow. Put the tip of that on the the very first one you did, the very first dot, and it's going to go to a circle. Your mouse will turn to a circle, and then click, and then that's going to give you the dotted line. Again, don't get perfect because see, I missed some of his hair. I've got some of the background. We're going to fine tune this. Just get your rough draft of it, and then make sure that you've got your dotted lines. And then just trace around him. Yep, yep. Okay, did you get it? Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So now we're going to go over to the very far left, and we're going to go all the way down. So you'll see like a, it's underneath our color palette, our color picker. There's a little, it's a rectangle with a dotted circle in it. Kind of looks like the Japan flag. Click on that. It's called Edit in Quick Mask Mode. When you click on that, it's going to turn your whole thing this is what they call a mask or quick mask mode. Now what it is is the, the color that you have is what you're going to keep. So that's, that's the selection that we're making. So like I've got some red on his hair, I want to get rid of that. Then I have some background that I need to add red because I don't want to keep that. So to add red, you're going to do the, use the paintbrush to add red. What if I want to get rid of red? What do you think I'm going to use? Eraser tool. Yep, so grab your paintbrush if you need to add some pink. So like on the background, if I miss the background, I need to, I'm going to add some pink. So I'm going to grab my brush tool. And remember, it's a brush tool, so you can adjust the size. How do I adjust the size? The brackets, right? And then if you need to erase some, of course, erase it. This is always the worst. I don't know how to get it. There we go. Hey, Daniel. So now go to your. Just leave it right there for now. You're good right there. Okay, did you get that? Okay, let's go down now and turn off our quick mask mode. So that's just a toggle switch. So turn off your quick mask mode. So it gets you back into the selection. Marching in, start the lines, whatever you want to call it. And if you notice, it, it, it picked up what you had colored on that. Okay, so let's get rid of the background. Go ahead and hit your delete key. What happened? Wrong one, right? We got rid of him instead of the background. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to flip what we've selected. We don't want to do him. We want to do the background. So to do that, you've got a whole selection menu. Along, right on the top, it says select. That deals with anything that you've got with your selection tool. The third or the fourth one down under the select tool is what? Inverse. That's going to flip that so now it goes, it's selecting the background and it goes clear out and about, that's okay. So now we don't have him select, now hit your delete key. Boom, okay. Now hit your control D to deselect. And let's size him up and put him out in the background somewhere. Let's put him back in the like peeking over the hill somewhere. How do I size him down? Does anybody know this one? Control T. Control T is for transform. So do a control T. Let's size him down. 
And I'm going to have him peeking over the hill back here. Okay, then set him in. Now what could I do to make him go behind, maybe behind the hill right there? What could I do with that? Yeah, I could probably erase, I could erase, erase him. I could really separate the foreground from the background if I want to. That's a lot of work and, and preserve him. But just take your eraser tool and just kind of go along the bottom of Justin so he kind of fits the contour of the... So I'm going to grab my eraser tool. Yeah, it's kind of hard. You could, you could do that. What you could do is you could lower the. Op We're getting too deep here. I'm getting way off track. If you wanted to, you could lower the opacity on him, so you could see him, so you could see through him. As long as you got that layer selected, I could lower that opacity. So then I could see the see the hill under him. Oh, it's so hard with an air mask. And then just increase my opacity back. Okay. okay, let's do another one. Let's go up to um, File, Place Embedded. This time, let's put in um, Hannah Montana. So go to Hannah Montana. Don't worry about the size and go ahead and set her in. We're going to get rid of the background on her. We're going to do this three different ways. We're going to go from the most difficult. So the one that we just did had a, had a little bit different background on it than this one. We could use the magnetic lasso tool on this one too. But it's got a pretty cool, I hope that's not the wall, whatever it is, fur or something. It's got some fur behind her, but it still has some variations in it that we got to get rid of. But it has some good contrast between her and the background. This time we're going to use that tool, the magic selection tool. We used that before with our, when we did, we played with Justin last time we used that. So the magic selection tool is just down from the magnetic lasso and it has the paintbrush with the dotted circle around it. That's the one we're going to use. Okay, so then just come out with that one selected, the magic selection tool, or the quick selection tool, sorry. So the quick selection tool, don't do the magic wand, we're going to do the magic wand next. Don't do the magic wand. So we're going to do the quick selection tool, and then I'm going to come out to the background, and I'm going to select out the background. You could select her, too, if you wanted to, and then just inverse it, but I'm just going to do the, the background. And you can fine-tune it if you want to. Remember your Alt key. If you need to minus some out, like I got some over here, I can use the Alt key and push that back out a little bit. You can fine-tune that some. Okay, did you get that selected all right? Then how do I get rid of the background? What am I going to hit? So hit your delete key. Did it scream at you? Did it give you an error? Yeah. What did we forget to do? I have to rasterize it, right? I did that on purpose. So, so you got to make sure that your layer is rasterized. So remember to right-click on your layer and rasterize it, and then just hit your delete key, and then her background's gone. Then control D, and that gets rid of that. Okay, then you can size her up if you want to. You can put her wherever you want to. Come on. That's going to flip it, and then hit your delete key. Yep. And then do control D. To get rid of it. There you go. And a control T to transform and size it. Okay, let's do one more. Let's go up to file and place embedded again. This will be the last one that we're going to place. Then we'll let you go. Place embedded. And then we're going to go find Justin's girlfriend. Who's Justin's girlfriend? Selena Gomez. Let's put Selena Gomez in there. Hit enter. First thing I need to do, rasterize my layer. So I'm going to right click and rasterize. 
This time I'm going to use my magic wand tool. Okay, so I'm going to go down underneath my quick selection tool. If you click and hold, there's a magic wand tool. The magic wand is really good when you have a solid background or something that's something like Selena's where it's just pure white. So now just come back and just click on the click on the white. That's going to select all the white out of there. Hit your delete key. So that literally took two clicks. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get a little border around it that you have to erase. I can see a little bit. I think that's on Hannah's. I can see a little bit of a border. Now let me show you something too. This is kind of cool. If I go, let me control Z this. Up at the top, see where it says, um, when you have a selection tool selected, it says tolerance. And it says 32. 32 is kind of the default in that tolerance. What that is is that, so when we go from Selena's hair, we go from white into her hair. It's actually going from white, and then right as you get it to the edge, it's going to go into some shades of gray, like shades of brown, really. It's not really like this cut off white to brown. And so that tolerance tells you how far you want to dig into that, that light brown. The higher the number it is, the more it digs in. The lower the number, the, the farther away it gets. So if I did, let me show you, if I did like two on this, just do a two, just to show the extremes. Click out here, see how it's not even getting, I can't even get the whole background with that. If I do a 10, let's see what a 10 does. If I do a 10, I'm still not getting it. 32 is kind of the magic number. Um, let me try a 20. 20 is getting better. But now when I delete it, see how much white's still left over? So I haven't dug in far enough, so I need to increase that number. You don't really need to play with it too often. Um, let me go to the extreme now. If I go to 80 and click. Come on. Then I get, I'm starting to dig. See, I, got, I lost her hands. So there's, there's a fine line in between there on how far you want to dig into that. So for the most part, you can leave that at... Um, 32 and play with it. Okay, let me show you something else too, just real quick. This is another FYI. When you've got something selected, if you do a right click on it, it gives you all kinds of options. One of them that I like is this feather. Feather, instead of, instead of making that distinct cutoff, will give you kind of an edge. It kind of feathers out that, that edge. So if I did a feather, and then I did like a, like a 20 on that, 50 is a little too intense. If I did like a 20, hit OK, and then I delete. See, I, I did, that's even a little high. Because see how it feathered out even all of this? But it'll, it'll give you kind of an edge feather on there. I probably should have gotten lower on that edge feather. So it's just a little bit softer look to it. Just know that that's there. You don't have to, you don't have to do that. Okay, let's put Selena down in the corner somewhere. Or just somewhere on your in your field, if we put her next to Justin. Go ahead and click on Justin for a second. We want to duplicate Justin. We're going to do one last little bit and then I'll let you loose. So we're going to duplicate Justin. So you can do a control C, just make sure your layer is selected, control C, control V, or from your layer over here, you can drag it down into your new button. Either way would give you, that would duplicate that, that layer. Okay, so now I've got two of Justin. We want to alter him just a little bit so that he doesn't look exactly the same. So I'm going to show you some control your transform tools. Let's control T, Justin. Now do a right click on him while he while he's, has that transform. Look at this, some of the things you can do. You can flip horizontal and vertical. You can rotate it. You can warp it. There's all different kinds of things you can do. The one we want to do is to flip horizontal. So flipping horizontal. He's going to just go the other direction now. Some of the fun ones to do, like I had somebody for part of their project, they did a, um, you're going to do kind of an about me thing. They had a, a sign that was like angled. And so they used the, I can't remember which one they used, the distort one. It was, dist or it was perspective. And then you can take these angles and you can actually angle them to fit different angles and stuff. So it's not just a square. Like if I did a, um, a warp, then I can grab a corner and I can warp, it wasn't warp, I can warp a whole corner. Okay. Okay. Did you get him flipped? You can even rotate him a little bit too, if you wanted to rotate him some. Just do a, um, just 
Just go outside of that a little bit. On your handles, if you come out a little bit, then you can, you can rotate him some. Okay. Now what we want to do with Justin is I want to select his sweater. What selection tool am I going to use? Now that we did three of them today, and I, I would do them in order of like most difficult down to easiest. So like the magnetic lasso, let's say I wanted to cut Woody out of the poster, the Toy Story poster. He's got a lot going on around him. I would probably start with the magnetic lasso and then do the mask thing because that's a little intense. But then I had the fur on Hannah Montana. That one I could use with the, the tool that we did. Magic wand, probably wouldn't, the magic wand probably wouldn't work to select him because it's going to go, it's, there's too much contrast there. If I did the magic wand, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to get just a little bit. I'm not going to get all the, all the details of it. So let's use the quick selection tool or the, or the quick, yeah, the quick selection tool on that one. And let's select his sweater. And you can just, just click the parts of his sweater. If you get too much again, like I got his watch, hold your alt key down. You don't have to hold anything down. You used to have to hold the shift key down, but you don't have to do that anymore. So you can just go over and click on the pieces that you, that you want. Remember, it's a brush, so you can size the brush depending on what you need. Boom upside down. Wait, 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 do that and do the quick selection tool and do a sweater because this is kind of cool. Did you get a sweater selected? This stuff's kind of cool. That's cool to see it work though for me. That'll work. Okay, with the sweater selected, now go up to um, image and mode, or image, sorry, image adjustments, and then hue saturation. So image adjustments, hue saturation. That's going to bring up some sliders. Remember our hue saturate and some lightness, the HSB or it's HSL for Photoshop. Now play with the hue a little bit and watch what happens. You can actually change the color of his sweater. The cool part about it is it's changing the, the hue it's, it's, it doesn't change any of the ripples. It's doing every pixel, and that is changing the hue of that particular pixel. So then it keeps all the, all the variations in it, too. So then you can make him totally different. Now, the cool part about this is, let's say you're putting something on your project, and it, the color is just a little bit off. You can go into this HSB, and you can play with the lightness, darkness, saturation, and you can play with that coloring so that it blends a lot better you know with the background or whatever you're you're creating and when you have whenever you have something selected I mean you could even take a paintbrush I wouldn't suggest this and then I can come over here and paint look at how that paints I'm just going all over the place the only place it paints is where my selection tool is at it's ugly though because it took all my like it's flat now it took out all the variations in it okay just the power of the selection tool Cool, right? Okay, we covered a lot today. So what you're going to do, you're going to use these tools a ton. And again, use the, don't overdo it. If you've got a white background, don't go get the magnetic lasso tool to cut it out. I mean, get your magic selection tool or your, your what is it, your magic wand tool to get rid of it. You know, use, utilize the tools that are, that are perfect, you know, made for that. So for your project, you're going to go down to Selection and Layers. And you're going to create your own About Me collage. So you're going to create an 11 by 17 or 17 by 11. It doesn't really matter with 150 DPI. Um, then you're going to go out and you're going to find some kind of a background. This is going to be about you. And your background can be whatever you want. It can be something that reflects you or it could be more like and then when you, after you get the background, you're going to put stuff on the front. So your background could be like, 
a fridge that you put magnets on. It could be a bulletin board. It could be pictures. I mean, whatever you want the background to be. It could even just be mountains with stuff on it. It could be a television. It doesn't really matter what it is. You be creative with that part. Then you're going to go out and, and embed or, or place 10 different things about you. And this could be anything. It could be hobbies, families, friends, pets, cars, movies, your likes, you know, whatever it is. They can be your own pictures. They could just be internet pictures. It doesn't really matter. You're going to put those into your background. You got to make sure, I don't want to see any squares. Like, that's, that's like the easy way to do it. You got to cut your, your stuff out of your pictures and put them onto your background so that they kind of blend with your background. And then we're going to get into some other things. Um, it tells you kind of what we did today. Um, you can change your color, use a filter. And then we're going to do, next time we're going to spice it up a little bit. We'll add some text and do some things. But today you can start getting your stuff on your background. Okay, any questions at all? Okay, make sure you start with an 11 by 17. Put your background on it though, so it's the correct size.